Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2022 Dover Athletic in League 2 and today we've got two matches Bristol Rovers Port Vale in the league we're about mid table we're doing all right so last episode we played the 4-1 victory against Oldham and then the wheels came off a little bit Crawley Forest Green and Grimsby we lost every single game we almost won the Crawley game. We scored three goals, but we also conceded four. We then ticked over into October where we drew 0-0 with Cheltenham. We beat Wolves under 23s in the mess that is the uh, Johnson's Paint Trophy or whatever it's called now, the Papa John's Trophy. And then we beat Stockport who were 23rd, I think, at the time, 3-0. So we are back up to 10th place in the table, 13 points on the board. It's very close. I know we're 10 games in, it is very close between 7th, who are on, well, I guess 6th place Colchester on 15 points, and all the way down to 19th place Scunthorpe on 10 points. So, there is a, there's a lot of teams sat in the mid-table, and fortunately for us, we're one of them. The starting lineup then for the Bristol Rovers game at home is going to be Stuart in goal, Lewis Payne, Zach or Leon Pambu and Will Kokolo in defence. It's going to be Paul Sell and Jake Forstakaski in midfield, those two are very, very good, I think, for this level of football. Silco Thomas is going to be on the right wing. Jack Spong is going to be on the left. Dean Laird and Stuart Humphrey? Sean Humphrey? It's Stuart Humphrey. I should know that. That's literally my first name. They will be the two strikers, both the Blackburn Loneys up front. Stuart Humphrey needs to start scoring some more goals. He's very good, but he's only scored one. So we still haven't managed to really see our new kits on camera. Because they're just white, red and purple, they kind of just look the same anyway. But trust me, the new kits are there. We are wearing our brand new Adidas kit. You can see actually when we do the team talks, it's kind of hanging up on the uh, on the coat hangers in the, in the little scene there. We are already 15 minutes in against Bristol Rovers and uh, nothing, nothing at all has happened so far. And if it stays like this, we are probably going to move up one place in the table up to ninth, apparently, moving us on to 14 points. A win might be enough to put us actually into the playoffs. In order to do that, we do need some highlights game. Nope, apparently not. It's uh, it's nil-nil. Not a single highlight to talk about so far in this match. Um, there you can see the kits. Look at them in the background with the little Adidas logo on. Um, we've been the better team. H have we? Have I just lied to a group of grown men? Well, I guess some of them are teenagers, but still. I tell you what, I'm so glad I decided to show you this match and not the match that we just won 3-0. Because, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on, isn't there? Laird has the ball for us. He's going for a run forward across to Silco Thomas. The first highlight has taken an hour, over an hour to get here. Lewis Payne with the ball to Silco Thomas, playing as a winger. Basically, I pushed him up to be a right winger because Kokolo is actually very good as a left winger. The cross comes in and it's gone wide. I thought that had gone in because of the, uh, the substitution that took place, but nope, it went wide. Weirdly, Jack Spong, who is five foot six, maybe, managed to get on the end of that. I think we need to do some changes, and our strikers might be the targets here. In fact, three lone players are not playing very good. We're going to do that. So we're going to keep Dean Laird on, but move him onto the right wing. We're going to do those two changes. So Williams, I think Williams is the poacher. Yes, he is. So Williams and Street are coming on. Dean Laird drops to be the right winger. Do we do any more changes? I don't think we do at the moment. But Dean Laird, you've got about 10 minutes, and then we might bring on Ben McNamee. 75 minutes, and we've got ourselves another highlight. It's taken a while, but they're starting to suddenly turn up. Simpson with the ball for Bristol Rovers. Dan's on the halfway line. Right-hand side again is Simpson, now Anderson. A bit of space for Anderson. Kokolo's with him every step of the way, but Anderson's going to keep going. Crosses in low. Leon Pambu just kicks it on the ground to Kokolo, and we've managed to clear it upfield. Jaden Williams back to Forster Kasky. Back again to Leon Pambu. We're going the wrong way, lads. Pambu gets it from Orr. Back to Zach Orr. Back to Pambu. Getting their pass accuracy up. That's good to see. They want to win that award for uh, most passes. Most accurate passes in 90 minutes. Williams is getting on the end of this. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Takes a few touches. Goes round. Blasts it into the bottom corner. We have taken the lead against Bristol Rovers. It's taken a long time to get here. But the substitution seems to be what's done it. Do we do that one final change of Dean Laird? Just to kind of do a bit of time wasting. There's 10 minutes left to play. Laird is going to come off. Ben McNamee is going to be coming on on the right-hand side. I mean, we've done well in the end, haven't we? Jack Spong is on an 8.2 rating. Williams at the substitute on a 7.3 because he scored the goal. There's so little going on, but somehow he, the team's XG is like one and a half each. Anderson with the ball on the right-hand side. Cross in. Duke McKenna's going to get there first across to Rodell Richards. And Rodell Richards has equalised in the 90th minute of the game. The Spurs loney. I assume he's a loney. He's got ridiculously high potential. I can't imagine that he's decided to drop down to League 2. Has potentially rescued a point for Bristol Rovers. 
We're nine, 94 minutes. We're going to pay 94 minutes, and Richards has controlled this. Do not throw this away. It's been such a boring game, and then all of a sudden it's kicked off right at the end. Lawrence has controlled it well. Stewart comes out, doesn't get there. They hit the post. Zachor clears the ball off for a throw. We have got very, very lucky. More highlights, though. More highlights. One minute and about five seconds left. Kokolo to Pambu. Forward to Searle. Right-hand side uses Lewis Payne. Loads and loads of space for the former Saints man to run into. Down the right-hand side. Stops and goes back to Paul Searle. Middle it is Forster Kasky across Will Kokolo. Loads and loads of space for the former Plymouth man who doesn't want to move, apparently. Fair enough. Searle to McNamee. If we can nick a winner, I'm going to be very, very happy here. Payne on the right. On the ground to Searle. Back to Payne. Back to Searle. Somebody crossed in. It's crossed towards Williams. Williams heads over the bar. All he had to do was get it on target. I think he might have been offside anyway. It is going to hopefully just end 1-1 here then. Unless we can nick the ball. We have nicked the ball. We've lost the ball. Forster Kasky's going to get a yellow card for that one. It's going to end 1-1 against Bristol Rovers then. It was boring. The first half of this match was absolutely boring. The second half, or not even the second half, the last 15 minutes, it all kind of kicked off. It's still going. We are 20 seconds over. The full-time whistle eventually does go. It's a point. I will take a point. Bristol Rovers arguably deserved a little bit more. Realistically, our two strikers were poor first half, weren't they? That was our problem. Changing the strikers and all of a sudden we score a goal. Well, that one point keeps us in 10th place in the table because everyone else around us also apparently drew a match, didn't they? So Colchester, Crew, and Aldershot are just ahead of us in the table. If we win our next game and nobody else plays, we have a chance to move up to 6th. We are going to go forward to match number 2 of the episode away from home against Port Vale down in 16th. Should be a winnable game. But then again, I thought that about quite a few of these already. Back for match number 2 of the episode up against Port Vale. It's not Port Vale. The match got postponed due to a waterlogged pitch. It's Walsall instead, apparently. So yeah, we're going to be playing Walsall, who are roughly in the same position in the league that Port Vale were. So realistically, it's like playing Port Vale just wearing a red shirt, apparently. It's going to be Ross Stewart in goal. Payne, Hayes, Pambu and Kokolo in defence. Let's take a quick look at Tim Hayes, shall we? Tim Hayes is a versatile human. I'm training him up to be a right back, but he can also play as a centre back or a right winger if we really need him to. He's very versatile He's not very good at tackling. Maybe, maybe we don't do. Maybe we don't play Hayes. We'll play Wakely. We'll do Wakely. Wakely makes a bit more sense, and we'll do you that way around. There we go. So Pambu and Wakely in defence. Sull and Forster Kasky as the midfield. Laird and Spong as the wingers. And we've learned from our mistakes. It's going to be Street and Williams up front. That way round. There we go. Let's beat Walsall. So because of the postponed match, obviously we have played less games, but I don't think it's really affected the league table too much. We've dropped down to 14th, so maybe it has actually. Forced to Kasky with a free kick after two and a bit minutes. Laird is there. It's found its way to Jaden Williams, and Jaden Williams gets his ninth, his ninth, his seventh goal of the season. He's, I, I said this, I think at the end of season four, he just needed a strike partner. I don't know what it is. Just give him a strike partner, and all of a sudden he scores goals. I don't know why, but I'm loving it. Obviously, the match isn't over yet, but if we do win this match, we're going to move up to 10th place in the table, back to where we started. Laird's cross comes in, doesn't manage to find one of our players. The header clear from Mayer. Searle gets it towards Forster Kasky. Left-hand side is Spong, chests it down. He's gone a little bit too far wide. He crosses it on the ground to Williams, across to Rob Street, and Rob Street is there to bag his fourth goal of the season, the second goal of the game. We are 11 minutes in and 2-0 up against Walsall. This isn't what I was expecting. Walsall are currently dropping down to 18th place, so they're currently 17th place. Port Vale literally one place ahead of them. So I wasn't lying when I was saying they're basically in the same place in the league. Khan to Perry for Walsall. Into the penalty area is Khan once again. Is he going to get a cross in? We are closing him down. Searle is the man. It's not a good cross. It's not a clever bit of business, though, from uh, Jack Spong either. It's coming back towards us. Stuart punches it clear. Forster Kasky lumps it upfield over the top. Streets controlled this well. Is it going to be three? It should be three. Straight into the goalkeeper. It's going to be a throw, but Rob Street really should have made it 3-0 there. Instead, we're going to see something else possibly coming our way from Walsall. It's gone just over the bar from Jonathan Smith, apparently the most generic of English names there. It is still 2-0. There's a lot happening. There's a lot happening in this game. It's like the opposite of the Bristol Rovers game. Kokolo to Wakeley. In the middle is Searle. Back to Wakeley. Kokolo again. He's going to go for a run. Forster Kasky. Loads and loads of space for the old man, who's 31 years old. He's not that old. Over the top, fine. Spong chests it down. He doesn't chest it. He controls it well. Jack Spong blasts it into the back of the net. It is 3-0 away from home against Walsall. 
I imagine, in real life, a lot of Warsaw fans might be walking out about now. We are very much a team of uh, two halves. We are either superb or really bad. We either win or lose. We very rarely draw a game. Cross comes in from Payne. It's towards Williams at the back. Heads it across streets there. It's a great block from the defender. And Walsall can clear it upfield instead. They, I say instead. They just ran it forward and the highlight ended. Fair enough. And at half time, it is 3 0. We are just dominating. Absolutely dominating. Williams, Street, and Spong with the goals here. What do we do at half time? I mean, just keep playing football. Apparently, Kokolo's on a 6 5. I don't know why you're playing so badly. Everyone else is playing well. Do we maybe do that? Let's bring on Silco Thomas as a left back. Because Kokolo, he's on a yellow card as well. That's my reasoning. He's booked. He's playing badly. Let's not get him sent off. First highlight of the second half begins. Also, obviously, do have the ball. Robinson to leak. They've got a leak in defence. That's their problem. That's the pun right there. Don't play a leak in defence. McGurk's gone all the way back to the goalkeeper. It's Kone. He's gone for a run. Lumps it over the halfway line. Header back four, though, from Jack Wakeley to Jack Spong. Now Jaden Williams across to Dean Laird. Forward ball finds Street. Laird's carrying on his run into the penalty area. He's going to go for goal himself. It's fallen to Street. It's blocked on the line, and it should be 4-0. Well, the second half doesn't look as exciting as the first half. We are already just over the hour mark. Thomas to Williams. Crosses it in towards the middle. Dean Laird heads it down to Street, facing away from goal. Invites Lewis Payne forward, the fullback. I mean, our fullback gets so far up the pitch, don't they? Payne crosses it in. It's gone over everybody. Spong's picked up an injury. We need to probably bring him off, I think. Thomas back to Wakeley. Now forced to Kasky. Plenty of numbers in front of him. Street is one of them. And in off the base of the post. It's 4-0 against Wolfsall. This is what I mean. Sometimes we're superb. Other times we're not very good at all. We've just managed to catch a game where we're superb. Right, we are going to take off Jack Spong. And we're going to bring on Stuart Humphrey as a winger. Maybe this is what he's missing. Maybe we're playing him as a striker and he doesn't want to be doing it. Maybe on that left-hand side is where he wants to be. Or we do our subs and then we get no more highlights until the end of the game. It's also an option. 82 and a half minutes on the clock. One final sub. What do we do? You know what, Lewis Payne, you've had a good game. We bring on Tim Hayes as a right wing back, even though he's probably going to be playing as a winger, which is probably quite good because he's got the ability to do so. 28 shots. 12 of them on target so far. Two minutes of normal time remain. Walsall still slowly trying to get the ball forward. Robinson has it standing in front of me. Over the top finds Mayer. One on one with the keeper. Is it going to be 4 1? It is 4 1. Ronan Mayer with his third goal of the season. That wasn't very good from us, was it? But it doesn't matter. The full time whistle eventually goes and we win the game 4 1. An XG of 3.41. Two goals from Street. Spong and Williams as well on the score sheet. Forced Dukaski getting a 9.0 because of his two assists in the middle of the pitch. That, that is a signing. In my opinion, Forced Dukaski could be our greatest signing we've ever done. And he's only played about five games for us so far. Well, a bit of bad news is Jack Spong is injured for eight days to two weeks. I mean, he's not very good, is he? If I'm perfectly honest, he's not very good. But so far this season, he's got nine starts, two goals and four assists to his name. It doesn't matter how good his attributes are if he's doing the job on the pitch. So that is it perfectly fine. We've been fined. £1,000. Six yellow cards. Did we get six yellow cards? Wakely, Kokolo, Laird, Spong, Street and Humphrey. That's, I mean, that's pretty impressive. Also, Humphrey, buddy, you've played six games at one off the bench. You've got an average rating of a 6.44. Come here, lad. Let's have a chat. Come here. Beckham with arms. Slightly positive. He might not be when, when he leaves. Now, I'm going to say this, or do we criticise? Right, we're going to criticise Humphrey, because I feel like if he's gone out on the piss a night before a football match, he can deal with being shouted at every now and then. Despite our recent rise up the table, I'd expect more from you. Rather disappointed. Negative. I don't think I've played that badly, but I'll do... Okay, that's that's good. That's good. Um, I'm the one who picks the team. Listen to me. I stand by what I said. Well, I mean, attribute-wise, you've got everything that you should be good at football. Personality-wise... I mean, it just says balanced. So far, I've seen anything but. So 12 games in to the League 2 season, we find ourselves bang smack in the middle of the table. 12th place after 12 games with 17 points on the board. Next episode, we're going to go forward probably to someone in December. So we're going to miss out all of November. We're going to come back for maybe Salford. Do we do Colchester and Salford? I feel like that might be a fun one. So yeah, end of November, start of December. That's when the next episode is going to be. Thank you very much for watching this one. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like. Hit the subscribe button as well if you are new to the channel. 
I'll be back next time with more Football Manager. All the comments, all the YouTube-y nonsense. I've nailed this outro. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.